Alright, so here we go. I'm going to give you a quick and complete tour of the Britannia Mine Museum located near Squamish, BC. About a 45 minute hour drive north of Vancouver, Canada heading towards Whistler, BC. I'll try and cover all the positive and negative aspects of the Britannia Mine Museum, what to expect when visiting, and overall if it's worth visiting. Now the Britannia Mine Museum is somewhere I haven't been to since I was a kid, so it's improved a lot since then, and a lot of it has stayed the same. Prices here aren't cheap, with adults costing just under $40 per person, youth around $30 per person, and children $20 per person. But I can say we were entertained for a good 2-3 hours while we were here. Just as you enter the Britannia Mine Museum, I recommend watching the 10-15 to 15 minute movie they show to give you a good understanding of the history of the area and the museum. It's right at the front entrance and it will really make you appreciate the rest of the tour. Now the Britannia mine opened in 1904 after learning it had rich minerals in the mountains nearby. At the museum, on display they have unique rocks from all around the world. I especially like this meteorite on display. Something I wasn't expecting to find and thought was very cool. I also found this mineral particularly interesting. I don't know a lot about rocks or minerals, but I can tell you it was found somewhere in India. Now, the Britannia Mine Museum has roughly a dozen buildings to explore, and yes, you do get to enter all of them. Outside, as you wait for your tour to begin, I think this was by far the most popular attraction. Mining for gold. There were groups of people here all day, of all ages, and since the water was warm from the summer sun, I actually found it pretty peaceful and enjoyable. Yes, there was real gold you could mine and take it home, but we usually ended up with the other minerals. Now, I don't know if you can imagine an entire town living in this area, but at the peak, there were over a thousand people employed at the mine. An entire community who grew together, with a majority of that time no roads in or out, and the only way to get to Vancouver was by boat. A very self-sufficient, close-knit community. Me and my buddies here, hard day's work. But look how realistic this picture looks. <laughs> okay, so let's get to the guided tour part. They recommend booking a reservation online to ensure you can get a tour. But we arrived on a Saturday during summer and had no problem getting a guided tour. They actually take you into the mine. Back in the day though, they would have stuffed 12 miners into this car, which is crazy. Now, unfortunately, you don't get to go too deep into the Britannia mine, but it was a neat experience. They actually dug 240 kilometers into the mine. It goes 650 meters below sea level. And believe it or not, it was actually a very coveted job because of its pay. During peak production in the late 1920s, early 1930s, it processed 7,000 tons of ore a day, which made it one of the largest mines in the world. The guided tour is overall about 45 minutes long. They really try and show you exactly what life was like for the miners. They end the tour in the main mill building. This building was built in 1923, is over 20 floors high, built into the mountain where they uniquely processed all the copper, zinc, lead, cadmium silver and gold. It's actually a really spectacular building with over 14,000 windows and would apparently light up the night sky with its 24 hours a day operation. To end the tour they have the new boom show which brings back all the noise, sights and smells of this national historic site back to life. Okay so after a big day at the museum we're gonna have a barbecue joint. Yes, I'm super stoked about this. We haven't had barbecue in so long. 
and there's just not a lot of barbecue places in Vancouver, so I'm super stoked to get some food. Yeah, let's go and do that. <laughs> 